to ba pe to mo de tin je akara lojo to ba royin ni yo fi akara sile o ti pe ti atin la soju ni le asofin agba ile yi ti baba didi omo wo ra re lo yato tori pe akini o gbojugbonu o da saka o si tun da nto o yato si awon abani kunjo to je pe gbogbo olohun enu won koju mo fara mo lo o ma jana ku ti ki yara ni jide eyin na e wo akitiyan ati igbiyanju re ni le asofin i proudly represent osun east ife jesha senatorial district Subsection 3 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which is the grown norm, provides, and I read verbatim, if any other law is inconsistent with the provisions of this Constitution, this Constitution shall prevail, and that other law shall to the extent of the inconsistency be void. Mr. President, we must not leave this forum with the impression. Mr. President, sir, this forum is this city, the sitting of this Senate, giving our people the impression, the people that have voted for us that the Legislative Houses Powers and Privileges Act, cited by Senator Inayetainang, it supersedes the provisions of Section 68, 1 and 2 of the Constitution. <laughs> Section 68, 1 and 2 of the Constitution is very clear. And I will say, I will say for the avoidance of doubt, that Senator Inayetainang cannot move a matter that is no, no? <laughs> senator Italian cannot move yeah, ask him is, is, uh, that mr president declare the seats of some people vacant if he has actually read with due respect to him the decision in the case of Oloyo Analegbe and following that in Oloyo Analegbe sir in all of your analysis, sir, Mr. President, the 1979 Constitution does not have the sub subsection 2. Subsection 2 is very clear. Section 68 2. And I will oblige Mr. President with it and the Senate. My conclusion is that the plank, the plank on which you ruled him out of order was under order 53.5 that the matter is pending in court, in South Judici. My position, sir, with due respect to yourself and to Senator Itainang and to every senator at this plenary, is that we must not give the impression that Mr. President cannot just sit at that exalted and esteemed seat and just declare this seat vacant. Thank you very much. May I be protected, Mr. President? May I be protected? I will ask my questions, but may I just be protected? I'm on the floor, please. I'm on the floor. Mr. President, I'm on the floor. I'm supporting your nomination. I wish to ask the following questions. The first question is that the duration of appeals at the Supreme Court, something has to be done about it. My Lord, will determine whether it's a question or a comment. It will respond to it. I have said something has to be done about it. And the reason why I'm saying this is because we are here to ensure that our people get justice. They get equity and that there is fairness in the polity. If you file an action at the Supreme Court at the moment, I am aware of the fact that a lot of matters come before them and that they write in long hands. And I'm telling you, Mr. President, sir, 2,003 cases, 2,004 cases are being had now. This is 2011. Secondly, 
I'd like to refer to the provisions of section 231, 2, 4, and 5. And I want to ask from my Lord what he will do during the process of amendment of the Constitution. My own take is that the provision I've just referred to gives the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria the power to appoint the CJ in acting capacity. For the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it becomes a matter of fait accompli. Something has to be done. The concomitant effect of those provisions, sir, 231, 2, 4, and 5, and I'm trying to be as short as possible now. The effect is that it makes, it makes the president, it gives the president a dictatorial impression. Thirdly, if you look, my lord, if you look at the third schedule item 1, section 20 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, appointments of members of the NJC, sir, the, your good office, with due respect, is given a tyrannical impression. Apart from your own office as the CJN, the person that is next to you, the CJ, and maybe the President of the Court of Appeal, every other person, the office of the CJN has too much influence. The, the person that we represent, the Sharia Court of Appeal, the Customary Court of Appeal, the, the representative of the judges is by appointment and by influence of the CJN. I think something has to be done about that, sir. Then the issue of corruption in the judiciary has been mentioned, but I would like to say that it is not an impression. My Lord, it is not an impression. Something has to be done about it. And I am saying this because I have been a victim of this. And I will say boldly and clearly, I have judgments here that I will just show. This is written. This is a judgment. This is another judgment. This is in my case in Oshobo at the tribunal. Pen was used to write dissenting judgment, my lord. I represent Osho East, if I Jesha, Senatorial District. I'll first of all like to say, Mr. President, distinguished senators, that the motion is very clear and unambiguous. From the heading of the motion, it is about investigation into the current fuel subsidy management. Current fuel subsidy management. It is very clear. It is categorical. It is unambiguous. When we get to the bridge, we will cross it. When it comes to the issue of removal of subsidy, the motion is very timely. It's timely, Mr. President, because it, it intends to investigate the management of this subsidy, looking at whether there has been transparency and accountability. And for us to do that, we have to investigate. The provisions of Section 80 of the Constitution has been read. I won't want to repeat it, especially subsections 3 and 4. And even the provision of Section 81 has also been read. Subsection 4, which talks about the bringing supplementary budget if there is need to incur further expenses. This is an affront when it comes to democracy and to the powers of the legislature. It is incumbent on us to find out whether what has occurred is mere misapplication of funds or misappropriation of funds. Misapplication of funds, Mr. President, is improper and illegal use of funds that has been lawfully appropriated. However, misappropriation has the content of dishonesty. We cannot determine this without investigating. Furthermore, like has been said, I would just like to reiterate this point. Where is the source of the unappropriated subsidy fund? The differentials, we must find out who authorized and how it was spent. 
I've done a little calculation and looking at the average, about 96 on the average. If 240 is appropriated billion for the whole year, and in eight months we've spent 931, it means on the average about 96 billion is being spent per month. I take it that it's moved um, in ascending order later on. Initially there was a compliance, but 96 billion is being utilized every month. This is a lot of money, and we must find out the, the we must investigate the source of the huge discrepancy. Mr. President, sir, I would just like to add that this is obviously at the expense of other things in the appropriation law, appropriation act, whether it's agreed or education or health and so on and so forth. In the 2011 budget, about 35 billion was appropriated for education, which on the average is close to three, three billion every month. If 96 billion is being incurred, on a final note, I will just, like I said, add my voice to the investigation, to the quest for investigation, if only to forestall the increment in the additional figure that has been in court. Thank you very much. Mr. President, having said all of this, and with a view, with a view, Mr. President, to saving money, I know that in a particular parastatal seven years ago, the personnel the money that is being used to pay salaries was six billion. Now it's twenty-four billion. We must save money all over the world. Yeah. Enrique Frederick Cardoso, the former president of Brazil, elevated thirty million people from poverty level. People that earn less than one dollar per day. How was he able to do it? Small and medium enterprises. We have a lot of youth walking the streets, Mr. President. The solution is not to spend very little money on security, whilst we spend 59 billion naira. The total money spent on security in Nigeria is 34 billion naira. On amnesty, the total money we are spending is 59 billion naira. So we have deficits of over 900 billion naira. We can balance the budget in this country by prioritizing and saving. So it is our work and I'm suggesting, Mr. President, sir, who appointed you? That we require a strategic recalibration of the budget. No more envelope. A ministry that does not need money, a department or agency that does not need money is given money. Let us give money for the sake of economic development, for the sake of job creation, for the sake of developing ideas, talents and skills of our youth. And I'm concluding by suggesting the invocation of Section 82. Section 82 provides, Mr. President, that in some instances we can say that for six months we don't want to address this budget. Let the Economic Planning Committee, the National Planning Committee of the Senate, sit down and prioritize this budget, tear this budget into pieces, and reorder the budget. What are the things we need in the next one or two years? And let us face those things. Thank you very much. Well done. APC. <laughs> A 